So I want to show you what we did in the Crafternoon workshop, okay? I'm going to show you my, my sample, my door. So this was my door, and didn't it turn out so cute? Oh my gosh, I had so much fun with this. It was so fun to show everybody the different techniques and things like that. So the reason I'm, I want to show you this is because I want you to know that even though the class is over, right, the live class is over, it's still available. Um, you can go, uh, if you sign up, and you can actually sign up for the workshop for completely free. Um, and if you do that, we're going to post, there's actually a link in the description on this post. And then um, Cheryl McCarson's with me today. She's going to post a link in here in the comments as well. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you knew that you still have an opportunity to do this. Okay. Um, so you can actually sign up for the workshop, which is completely free. And uh, my friend Tracy Gibson over at Print Cut Craft, they're the ones that cut these. Um, and they're just fabulous. Okay. The door is just fabulous. This little piece comes off. Isn't that cute? So that's my door, right? And then this is our little spring decor. This is the spring door. We will be doing later on a summer door. We're doing a collaboration together to do a summer door and then later a fall door and then a Christmas door. And so we're, we're super excited to be doing that. You finished yours yesterday, Diane? That's awesome. Okay, so we're posting the link for you. You can actually, uh, if you sign up, you do have to register because Tracy over at Print Cut Craft, her name's Tracy as well. Um, she will need your email address because she will email you the links to the classes, to the pre-recorded classes. Um, she taught this part, um, I taught the door part. And then if anybody's interested in a kit, that's the only thing that would cost you uh, money, right? So if you decide that, oh my gosh, this is so cute, I want a kit, okay, then you'll have an option there to buy this kit. And then also, this one I'm going to be doing today, it looks really cute. They're little standing birdhouses um, with little birds that you can put then next to kind of on, on each side of your door if you want to create a cute little vignette. Okay, super, super cute. So obviously, I did the door on during our Sunday crafternoon. And then today during Craft and Chat, I'm going to work on the little birdhouses. Okay, so the kits are completely optional but you can register for free to watch the workshop if you want to. Okay. So I'd love for you to just click on that link. It's uh, www.printcutcraft.net forward slash crafternoon. And uh, Cheryl has posted it here. I'm going to post it right there. That's where you can go and sign up for the free workshop um, to get all the things, the supply list, the, the recordings, all of the things, right? And then that's also where you can um, sign up to get a kit for this. And then this one is also optional. So there's two kits that are optional with the Crafternoon workshop. Okay. Yay. So I'm excited. I'm going to make my little birdhouse uh, pieces today to coordinate with my door. And um, I just think it turned out so cute. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to hold it up a little closer. Do you see the crackle technique? We're going to do some more crackle today. And I'm just going to make a little set to kind of coordinate. Okay. Isn't it fun? Here, I'll put it over here. You can probably see it even better. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, let me mess with this just a minute. Do, 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 do. I wonder if it'll let me change it. Okay. I'm trying to get it to focus a little better. <laughs> okay. Yes. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be working on the other kit that is optional with the Crafternoon workshop. Okay. Okay. You love all things crackle. Me too, Tony. <laughs> So I'm going to put this project right back here so I can kind of see it and, you know, and then I, I'm going to make my, these guys, right? These are going to be little standing bird houses with a couple little standing birds, just really, really cute. So I'm going to kind of make these to coordinate 
with um, my door project, which I probably should have put in a place where you could really see it better. Let's switch, let's switch these two. Because where I'm standing, you're not going to be able to see that at all. Let's make sure it's going to not fall. Okay. Oh, you still can't see it. Let me see if I can turn this. There we go. So there it is. Sorry, there's a little cord right here. <laughs> so at least you can somewhat see it in the background back there. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that just like that. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be working on this little stand-up birdhouse kit. Um, it is super cute. And again, it's from Print Cut Craft. They do all of their own cutting, um, and it's fabulous. The pieces are really nice, good quality. And I'm going to start with this part right here. I'm going to start with the actual bodies of the birdhouse. Uh, of the bird houses, I should say. And you'll see that they each have a roof. I think the roofs are exactly the same. Yes, they are. So the rooftops will be uh, on there. And let's move these two over. So I want to start with these first because I am going to be doing the crackle technique on them. And I want to do a little napkinizing on them too. Right? As always. <laughs> I love I love my napkin art. You know that. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm going to use some complementary colors. So my, the color I'm actually going to be using today is going to be this color called Fresh Mustard. And I'm a little concerned why this is a little bit blurry. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to take this camera off right quick. Let me make an adjustment just real fast. We're good to go. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to, well, I guess I could just leave that up there. I'm going to hide this comment right quick. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do first, and I'm going to switch screens here. It just feels better to me, is I'm going to put some paint on these houses. Okay, so again, this was part of my Crafternoon workshop. Um, which was a collaboration with Tracy at Print Cut Craft. Um, it was a Sunday afternoon. It was really fun. We had such a good time. And so today I'm doing um, the little coordinating kit. You can kind of see the, the door back here in the background. I'm doing the little coordinating kit that goes with it for the little standing bird houses. And it's super cute. And you can get this kit from Print Cut Craft. Um, when you sign up for the Crafternoon workshop, which is completely free. And then the kits are optional. So I'm using this color called Fresh Mustard. Fresh Mustard. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make the birdhouses the, the same. I'm going to put one on each side of my door when I put it on display. Love this color. It's a really just a nice, warm, kind of golden yellow. Very, very pretty. Oops. Oh, my goodness. My handle just fell off my paintbrush. Squeeze it in there a little bit more. So first color, fresh mustard. I like this color. Fresh mustard, great warm golden yellow. And then I'm gonna crackle over these. So this is the color you're gonna see in the cracks. I don't want, really want everything to be too matchy matchy, but I want it to be complimentary. And this is the color, um, after I did my napkin art on my door, um, I decided to warm up the roof of my little birdhouse and stuff here. Let me show it to you. So the napkin art on, the napkin art on my door, do you see how the flowers have more of that kind of golden yellow? So I went in and touched up my roof and my bird with this kind of mustard yellow color, this golden mustard color. And I think it's just perfect. It just really looks really good with this particular flower and napkin. Okay. 
Yes. And we're getting, yeah, we have a whole nother order coming in from Country Chic today. Those, those are the paints I like to use. Country Chic, uh, they're chalk and mineral based paints. And they are just fabulous. So you can see that I'm going to put this mustard color on here. Now, I was kind of thinking about doing the mustard color on my birds, but I'm not sure just yet. So I'm going to hold off on those for a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the rooftops here, the rooftops, kind of scoot, make a little room. We want those to dry just for a minute. We are going to put crackle medium on them. So those of you that, that still need a little, maybe a little practice with crackle medium, <laughs> I'll be able to show you. So my rooftops are going to be this really pretty green. It's called Secret Garden. Secret Garden. And it's a great green, great green, I think, for spring and all the things. So because these are laser cut, they're already dark on the edges. But if you want to dry brush um, around the outside, you can. And I kind of like that dry brush look on the outside. It's kind of kind of cute, kind of shabby. Really cute. So I'm going to make my rooftops this green color. Oh, it's your first time watching live? Well, welcome, Jan. We're glad you're here. You can kind of watch. I'm going to share some paint techniques today. Some fun things. I promised the girls on the, the Crafternoon workshop that I would do this today um, during our craft and chat. So I know there'll be several of those people watching as well. Go ahead and just kind of dry brush these edges. Sometimes that's best to do first. And then I can set it down to finish painting. That's the smarter way, huh? All right. So pretty. So my napkin art is what's going to pull kind of these colors together. It's going to look really, really nice. So I have used, again, I've used Fresh Mustard and Secret Garden. Those are the colors I've used so far. Put my paint brushes over here so they'll be out of the way. And the next thing I'm going to do is just dry my painted pieces. Okay. Just going to dry them. Really want to focus on the bird houses first because I know for a fact I'm going to crackle them. Let's just I'm gonna pull these over here. They can keep drying on their own. And let's crackle. Okay. <laughs> Secret Garden is the color of the paint. Secret Garden is the color of this paint. Sorry, I get my paint jars very messy. And Fresh Mustard is the color of this paint. Okay. Um, Joanne, I love to use Country Chic uh, paint. It is by far, I mean, I've used a lot of chalk and mineral, ba mineral based paints um, over the lifetime of my crafting. They're my favorite paints to, uh, they're my favorite ones to paint with because they have such a great adhesion. You can put them on anything. I'm kind of a junker, a thrifter. I love to paint old things. I love to give old things new life. And so I really love the chalk and mineral based paints because they'll bond to anything, anything, any kind of surface. And you don't have to do a lot of like prep work um, to your pieces. The other reason I really love these too is they have a built-in sealer. So there's a sealer already built in. So after about 48 hours, takes about 48 hours, depending on, you know, the conditions outside, things like that, the paint will cure, which is like the hardening process. So it's going to really harden to the surface. And um, 
uh, it's just fabulous paint. And I don't know if you have been out there, but a lot of chalk and mineral based paints are quite expensive. And I think that this one is more comparably priced, I think, for crafters than some of the more expensive ones that people use a lot for like furniture refinishing. But I've refinished furniture with these pieces, this, this paint, and I've done all kinds of pieces and it's just really, really good quality. Very, very good quality. Okay. Yes, Marilyn, this is a kit. Um, this is kind of the add-on kit from the Crafter Noon workshop that I taught with as a collaboration with another Tracy, with Tracy Gibson from Print Cut Craft. And I promised all the girls in that uh, Crafter Noon workshop that I would do this today. So that's what I'm doing. So the next thing I'm going to do, these are all still available. You can go and check out the link. The next thing I'm going to do is add my crackle medium. Okay. So crackle medium looks kind of milky, right? You can kind of see that it looks a little bit milky in there. So it is important that with crackle medium, you don't shake it. Don't shake it. We just want to just kind of gently stir it. You don't even want to stir it real, real fast because you can get those little micro bubbles and those are kind of a pain to get rid of. So I'm just going to, I'm taking the end of a paintbrush, but you could use like a popsicle stick, whatever you want to do. And we just need to mix this up because it does have unique elements in it um, that have a tendency to settle. It's just normal. Um, so it's important to kind of come back in and kind of mix those elements back up. And uh, now we're gonna go and put our crackle medium right onto these bird houses. So what will happen, and you're gonna see it's very, very wet. We wanna make sure it's, it stays very wet. We wanna do what I call a healthy coat, which means it needs to look really wet, right? It needs to look really wet. I am crazy for crackle. I just, I love the crackle finish. I think it's because I love texture so much. I'm kind of a texture junkie. So this is going to look amazing. Right now, these look really like in your face, you know, with this color. But it's going to be much more subtle after we crackle it because this is the color that's going to show through the cracks. Okay. So if you'll kind of notice, I don't know if you can see, oh, they can't, there, look in the light. Do you see how the lights really reflect? It should look really nice and wet like that. Um, it does not matter uh, the directionality of your paintbrush. None of that really matters at this point. That will matter when we put the top coat on. Okay, that will matter when we put the top coat on. All right, so let me just make sure. I'm not worried about the sides uh, at all. We'll just dry brush some of the top coat around the sides. Okay, and again, let's just take a look. Nice and wet, okay? Nice and wet. Now, I really like for Crackle Medium to dry a little bit on its own first. Um, if you'll let it dry a little bit on its own first, this is where I kind of differ from other people that do crackle. Um, we're going to let it dry on its own first, but then we're going to help it dry a little further with our heat tool. Um, some crackle mediums will tell you to put the medium on while the crackle medium, I mean, put your top coat of paint on while the crackle medium is kind of like tacky, kind of sticky. But I've found that sometimes that can cause what we call drag. Um, where it kind of pulls the paint and the crackle medium. I actually like to do it better when it's more dry, okay? So while this is kind of setting up and drying on its own, I'm going to work on another piece, okay? I'm going to work on some other pieces. So I'm going to just slide these out of the way for a second, just kind of slide them out of the way. And I want to work on the little stands. These are going to be the stands for the birdhouses, they're going to layer up, which I think is really cute. They're going to look so cute. So basically what happens is you're going to wind up gluing all three of these together. You see that? And then your house is going to slide down inside. So this is the stand that's going to, um, that your birdhouse will go into so that it, it will stand on its own. 
right? Okay, I'm, I see a question here. Carrie says, I got bubbles on mine. How do you prevent them? Most of the time, it's from not being too aggressive. Don't shake it. Don't be too aggressive when you stir it. And don't be too aggressive even when you paint it on. Now, because we are crackling and you're getting this texture, um, I just wouldn't worry too much about it. I really wouldn't worry too much about it. A lot of times once you put the, the top coat of paint on, depending on how heavy the paint is, it just kind of fixes everything. <laughs> okay. It just fixes everything. Uh, the above link posted is not taking you to print cut craft. Okay. We'll post it again, Vicki. Okay. And the, I also posted it up in the link on the description. All right. Yeah. She, Cheryl's posting several different links for me. Some of it's product links and just different things. So I decided I want these to look more like a wood grain. All right. I want them to look more like a wood grain. So I'm going to be using my home decor liquid wax. This is the antiquing version. And y'all, this makes a great faux stain. How many of you have ever stained before? Anybody out there ever stained before? Staining can be a, a fun process. Staining can also be kind of a stinky process. It can be kind of a messy process. And so I really like uh, being able to um, do a faux stain. <laughs> I like a faux stain. So let me tell you about this wax. This is the antiquing one. Okay. We also have a white wax, which is great for things that you want to have more of a whitewash to look to. And then uh, we also have a clear. And the cool thing about the clear one, y'all, is you can tint the clear one with your own paint. Okay. And that's kind of neat because then you can have a liquid wax form of any paint color that you choose. So watch when I put this on. It's going to go on uh, almost like a almost like a glaze, really. It's, it's a liquid. It is wax. It will harden. It has a curing process. It will harden. Um, and it just looks so awesome. Look at that. So do you see how you still see the wood grain coming through? If you want a lighter wood finish or a lighter stain, you can always take a baby wipe and kind of wipe some back off. If you want it to be heavier, you can let it dry and add a second coat. Um, so I'm just kind of just kind of adding a little bit on and then I'm just moving it, right? Just kind of moving it around. And I just, I love the finish. So this is something you need very little of. A, a little goes a long way. So do you see that I'm actually dipping into the lid? <laughs> I'm actually dipping into the lid of the paint. It, well, it's not paint. I can't call it that. It's liquid wax. Um, so... You can just dip in. It really doesn't take much. A little goes a long way. It just depends on how dark you want your faux stain to look. You can do this on top of painted, painted things. Um, it looks really pretty. Like if you have anything that's embossed, I love to do embossed metal and things like that. It looks really pretty on things that you've painted that are embossed or have design on them and just use that paintbrush. Um, it is important to make sure you wash your paintbrush out really well after because this stuff will harden. I just love it. I just think it looks so pretty. And I'm using this because on my door, on my door project, um, I used it on the hardware for the door and the handle for the door. So it doesn't take much at all. So most of the time, I just dip into the lid. <laughs> I just dip into the lid. And I'm about out, so I'm going to dip just a tiny bit. There we go. Super fast and easy. And these will harden so they have a really nice hard coat finish and they'll be okay. It's okay for outdoors as well. Okay. The brand of the wax is Folk Art Home Decor Wax. This is the antiquing. The antiquing one is, is brown. 
Um, the white is, is kind of a, it looks kind of whitish, kind of yellowish, but it's a whitewash. And then there's also a clear that you can tint. Okay. And I think Cheryl posted the link for it. If you look in the comments, there's, there's a link. Okay. So while these are drying and we'll be layering all these together, I'm going to come over here and do these. All right. So these are the little stands in your kit that are going to hold the birds. Okay. So it can have little, little flying birds. And this actually comes out. It's going to come in, in your kit in two pieces like this. But I like to go ahead and push them in, push it in to where it's flat to the thing because it's going to be a lot easier to paint that way. <laughs> okay. So let's, I'm going to just kind of turn my jar again. So I have some in my lid and I'm going to make these brown also. I'm going to make them look wood stained. And again, a little goes a very long way. The more you use, the more you let sit on there, um, the darker the stain will be. And I don't want it to be too, too dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my little stick here too. I'll show you what it looks like on the door where I used it on the door in just a second. Let me get this done. Okay, that one's done. Love this stuff. And like I said, one jar will last you a long time. Get, if you get too much, you can always just come back with a baby wipe and wipe it off. And it pretty much gives you every shade. You can go really, really dark. You can go very, very light. But you do need to kind of manipulate it before it completely dries. So if you were going to wash some of it back off, you'll need to do that before it dries. Okay? You can't decide which napkins to use, Sherry, on your door. <laughs> it is a hard decision sometimes, uh, but make it springy. Do something kind of fun and springy so you can enjoy it the rest of the season. Okay, so now those are done. And then there's just a couple more things here. Very, very small things. And it's these, it's these little bitty circles. Okay, just these little bitty circles. These are gonna be on the birdhouse. They're like the little, um, like their little stoop. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> their little perch. So there's two small and two large. Okay. Super easy. Just paint those up. We'll set those over here to dry. Now, the other thing you could do if you wanted to, like I've got my birdhouse here. If you wanted to take your brush, right? If you want to take your brush and just do a little bit of kind of um, little pouncing, a little bit on the edge, you can... Um, you don't have to put it everywhere, but it just gives you kind of a nice, whoops, sorry, I'm kind of out of the light here. Kind of a nice antique -y kind of look. Can you see that okay? So that's always fun to do. I got my thumbprint on here. <laughs> it kind of looks like a knot hole. So if you want to add anything on here, Scratch through that part, rub through that part. You can. So I'm gonna antique mine up just a little bit. I'm also gonna come back in and sand these a little bit. So they'll change. It's kind of nice though that nothing looks, you know, super brand new. Just giving it a little bit of character. Okay. Okay. That part's done. And you can see there's no way to do this without it really getting on your fingers, but it will clean off. 
<laughs> I promise it'll wash off. It washes, washes off quite well. Um, and if you were ever to get it on, sorry, I'm wiping my fingers off down here. If you were ever to get it on your clothes, um, just want to make sure that you wash it. Just, just try to get as much of it off before it has time to harden. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's look at the door again. So I can show you where it is on the door. So I used it on the hinges on the door right here. And if you do um, go sign up for the workshop, you're going to see the whole video for this door. We're going to send you the link. And I did it for the handle, right? So it just seems fitting to go ahead and do it also um, on this, the birdhouses, right? Because I'm going to display it all together. Okay. All right. So let's scoot doot this stuff out of the way. We're going to go back to our crackle. Now I want to show you what, what this is looking like. Okay. It's starting to kind of dry on its own. Do you see how you'll see little areas that are kind of look more matte than glossy? That's where the crackle medium is starting to dry on its own. So now I'm just going to help it along. Okay, I'm going to help it along. I'm going to use my heat tool. This is the little Ranger Craft uh, Craft Heat It tool. They don't come in white anymore. They're just in black. Um, mine, as you can see, is well loved. <laughs> so when you're drying these, okay, if you want to speed along the process, when you're drying these, you want to keep the heat tool moving. Okay, you want to keep the heat tool moving. going to be so pretty. So just keep that heat tool moving. And then I'm going to tell you to just try to have it mostly dry. If the whole thing isn't dry, it's okay. I know I have a hard time. I'm, I'm like the world's most impatient crafter. So I always want to hurry to the next step. So it's okay, but I want you to have the majority of it dry. Okay. Yeah, feel free to look at our Country Chic paint colors. Like I said, we have another order coming in today. The Crafternoon Workshop kind of wiped us out of a lot of things, but we have more coming. Okay, I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. So you can kind of see there's still a couple of little wet spots, right? You see a few little wet spots, but that's, that's going to be okay. Let's do our larger one first. So I'm going to do white on top of this. Okay, I'm going to do white. This white is called Simplicity. It's kind of the purest white, and I like using a crisp, fresh white for spring projects. Just think it looks so pretty. And you're going to want a clean brush. This needs to be a good, clean brush. And I like using a brush that's about, you know, a wider brush. This one is about an inch. It might be three quarters or an inch, something like that. Now, this is where you really have to be careful because... This is when, when the, the top coat of paint touches the crackle medium, right? When those two things combine, that's when the cracklage starts. And y'all, it starts immediately. Like it's going to start immediately. So pretend like this is the birdhouse. You cannot paint it like this. Because if you do, you're going to paint over that crackle process and you're not going to see it. So you have to take it basically one stroke at a time, right? I'm going to go one stroke. And as soon as my hand, you know how your hand just naturally lifts up? I usually turn over the brush and I continue the stroke. Turn over the brush, continue the stroke until you just need to put more paint on your brush. Okay. So I want y'all to watch me do this. Um, and hopefully it will help you to kind of get, get the gist on uh, the best way to apply your top coat of paint because that crackle that crackling process is going to start pretty much immediately. Okay. So I'm going to put a pretty good size. Let's kind of slide things over here. I'm going to put a pretty good amount of uh, paint on my brush. Okay. And I'm going to start just kind of right here on this edge and I'm just going to push down. And as soon as my hand lifts up, I'm turning the brush over 
and I'm going to continue the stroke. If I need more paint, I go get more paint and just turn over and continue the stroke. Now, this is what I want to show you. Can you see it? The crackle's already starting. It starts immediately, okay? Immediately, so you can't go back over your brush stroke. If you get a little spot that needs to be touched up, we can touch that up, but just try try to just don't worry about touch-ups until the till the end. <laughs> okay. So let's do it again. Okay, I'm going to start here at the top and turn over, turn over. Okay. Now you're going to notice as I do this that some areas are going to have a little bit thicker crackle and I mean thicker paint and some are going to have um, thinner areas of paint. I actually like that because I think it looks more naturally aged. Um, most of the time though, I can tell you this, that the thicker the paint, the thicker the crackle, the thinner the paint, the thinner the crackle. Okay. I personally like having both. So I'm going to try to kind of make sure that we get both represented here on this guy. Let me hold them up again. So you can see all of that crackle. Now see the little, where the little paint kind of, uh, the little paint edges here where you kind of stop and start, you can see the strokes. You wind up with these little paint ridges, right? You can see I got a lot thinner right there. Here's the other cool thing about using the chalk and mineral based paints. Okay. If you'll be patient and I know it's hard, I know it's hard, but if you'll be patient and uh, trust the process, this is my t-shirt today, trust the process. What will happen is that paint will start to self level. It'll just kind of self level on its own. And I know it's hard to believe that, but it really does happen, but you have to let it happen. <laughs> You can't force it to happen. You just have to let it happen. And, and it will. It'll happen on its own. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, if you just can't wait for that, okay, if you just, you're too impatient, you just can't wait for that, um, then you can go ahead and dry it. I like to put some heat to it because I like it to feel a little chippy. I'll show you how to do that. Um, but um, if you do dry those ridges, the best thing you can do is just let it completely dry and then sand them down. Okay. But if you're patient, if you can be patient, I promise you, whoops, a little bit right there, um, they'll self level. So, again, just don't go over your brush strokes. That is key. So if you get like this, where you have a couple little spots here, usually what I'll do is I turn my brush like this, kind of vertically, and you could just run just a little bit of paint in those areas. And sometimes I just wait and touch it up at the very end. Ooh, it's crackling nicely, nicely, nicely. Okay, I'm going to hold this up for you. Hang on. <clears throat> Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So now we're seeing all that beautiful mustard color coming through the cracks, right? Uh, the blue color I used on my door, Sherry, was called Tide Pool. Tide Pool. So when you go to look, if we're out of something, don't panic because we do have an order coming in today. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I don't know what all's on that order, but I know there's one coming. <laughs> okay. So this is where if you just have, have to move on, this is where you can use your heat tool. Okay. Or you can just try to be patient and let the paint self level, let it do its thing. Can you tell the difference? Can you see how I went a little thicker on this one? 
I have a little thicker paint on this one than I do on this one, right? Because I want you to see the difference. I want you to see the a little thicker the paint, usually the thicker the crackle, okay? Oh, I'm so glad you ordered the kit scale. You're going to love them. Make sure after you sign up for the workshop, the workshop's free. You'll get a recording. Um, she'll add this recording also um, when it's done. Um, we'll download this one for her. Um, but all of the workshops have been recorded. Um, the lives were recorded. So if you missed uh, the, the door workshop, don't worry. There's going to be a link to it. Um, and they're going to email you all of that stuff. And, um, and that's completely free. Okay. The only thing that's going to cost you anything is if you decide to get the kits. Okay. Okay. So I can tell, I hope, I think you can kind of tell that the, the leveling is starting, right? You can kind of tell again, if you're just patient, it's so hard to be patient though. I know it is. <laughs> uh, it, I know, I know, I know it's hard to be patient. I can't, I'm not, I haven't painted these guys yet because I can't decide what color I want them to be, but we'll figure that out here in just a little bit. I think while these are still kind of um, doing their thing, um, actually, I think it'll be okay. I'm, I'm, since I'm going to do some napkin art on them anyway, I'm not going to cover the whole thing with napkin art. I'm just going to do portions. So basically the colors I've used so far are simplicity Fresh Mustard, Secret Garden, and Crackle Medium. Okay, and we've used our liquid wax for kind of a faux stain. All right, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> so let's go to, I'm going to go to this one first, since this is the one we did first. So it's kind of cool what happens, all right? So if you wait for everything to self-level, that's fine. But even if it feels dry, I want you to take your heat tool and take your heat tool down on top of the crackle because it actually helps to activate the crackle process even more. And it gives it gives your crackled paint kind of a chippy feel. So you can almost kind of feel it. It's kind of it just kind of raises it, gives it a really, really nice chippy kind of feel. Um and I, I just love it. So always, always, I'm going to tell you to kind of heat set your crackle. Don't keep it on there so long that the paint starts to bubble. If, if you see your paint bubble, lift your, lift your um, heat tool up or just keep it moving. Make sure and keep it moving. So I keep mine kind of close, but I keep it moving. And I'm going to get this really almost kind of a look down here at this part. Let's see if I can get it. See how it looks almost chippy, kind of chippy. And when you feel of it, you feel that chippiness. It's awesome. Okay. So this is the one that I went lighter on in areas. You can tell, right? You can see where it's thicker and you can definitely tell where it's thinner, right? Okay. I'm just showing this to you so that you know, I want you to be able to see the difference. Whereas this one, I was pretty good at keeping this one pretty thick all the way through. Okay. So let's heat this one up. My heat gun's too hot, too hot for me to hold the piece. <laughs> I love the crackle too. It's just, it's so much fun. And especially right now with springtime and I don't know, it just fits. It just fits really well. So make sure to do this step. I want you to have chippy crackle. Okay. I like, I like chippy crackle. That looks so good. So that heat just helps it separate even a little bit more, kind of raises it a little bit. And I love the look. Okay. So let's look at this one up nice and close. Look at that. And when you take your finger like over this, you're going to feel that chippiness. Isn't it cute? Are we going to have wood spools available again? Yes, Cassie, we will. Yeah, I have a project coming up pretty soon for a craft and chat using wood spools. So, yeah, we will. <laughs> Doesn't that look great? It looks so good. Now, look at the sides. We've got some paint going on. So this is where we're going to come back with that same brush. 
and just kind of dry brush, right? Doesn't have to be perfect, just dry brush over the sides. Go back to my lid here. It's a great way to kind of clean up whatever paint is left in your brush or if any of the paint kind of dripped over the edge. And you know what, girls, I did not do the back side of mine um, today, but if you wanted to do the back, depending on where you're going to put this project, if you want to paint the back of it, definitely I would recommend doing that if you think it's going to be where somebody will see it. I just didn't take the time to do that today. But since they are going to be standing, it would look nice if you went ahead and did the back, too. Okay. So we've touched that up. Now, I'm just going to dry it again just to be sure it's really good and dry because we're going to do a little bit of napkin art. Okay? Yeah. We'll do some napkin art. It'll be fun. I'm kind of drying just the edges because sometimes when you paint the when you're painting the, the edge of the house, it'll get on the, on the front edge a little bit. Hopefully I didn't miss any questions. We, we get our wood spools from a distributor, from a wood cutting distributor. I wonder if Hobby Lobby sells wood spools. They might. I'm not sure. They might. Okay. Let's do some napkin art. Okay. So when it comes to the napkin, I kind of want these to coordinate with the door, right? So let's go back to my door. I'm going to take this off so that you can see. This is the napkin I decided to use. Now, if you buy the kit and you're not into napkin art, like you've never done any kind of napkin art before, I want to show you that the, our sample door for the kit um, uses this really pretty napkin. So this napkin is going to be in all of the kits. Okay, so if you've never done napkin art before and you're like, well, I don't know where to get a napkin, <laughs> don't worry, this one will be in your kit. Okay. Okay, but I used this one. I used this one on my door project. So I'm going to cut some elements from these, not the whole thing. I'm not going to napkinize the whole thing, just going to put some flowers here and there. So like I'm going to take a little piece like this and I'm going to do what I call a loose fussy cut. Okay, just kind of a loose fussy cut. I'm not really cutting like right on uh, all the edges. Just kind of around them, almost like bubbling kind of around them. A lot of this background of this napkin is just going to kind of disappear, which is the magical part. It's going to kind of disappear right into the background. So here we go. I appreciate y'all watching today. This is a little bit more of like a workshop workshop than just a craft and chat. <laughs> Did I, Yes, Sherry, I use simplicity on the houses. So this is the white, the pure white. So I've cut my napkin. I haven't separated it yet. It's so much easier, y'all, to separate after it's been cut. So see how it's just bubbled around? I didn't try to cut all those details. So I'm going to use what I call my lick and stick method. Okay. <laughs> Tap my thumb and my finger, get it a little bit wet, and just really, really push my fingers together and see how it just kind of pulls the plies apart. This napkin has three plies. So we're going to take off one, two, and then what we want is just the top tissue that has the actual artwork on it. Okay, that's what we want. So look how pretty this is going to be. I can kind of have this one maybe coming up like that. 
Let's cut maybe a couple for this side. And this is also a good time, like napkin art is a makes a great disguise, right? So like if you do have a little area on your crackle, your birdhouse that, that you're just like, oh man, it just didn't come out as good as I had hoped, you know, um, that might be a great place to put a butterfly. <laughs> that might be a great place to put, you know, a little flower or a little viney leaf or something, right? So it can be very helpful in, um, I definitely want some kind of at the bottom. Separate my napkin again, make sure all the napkin plows get off. If you don't, the top tissue will try to lift off. Okay, so it is really important. Oh, I forgot to cut around this one. See, on these lives, sometimes I get ahead of myself. Forget what I'm doing. So, don't have to be super great cutting, which is nice because fussy cutting can be hard. So, I'm just kind of, again, just bubbling around. Perfect. Okay, so if I have a couple of these flowers kind of coming up right from the bottom but then this one I thought it might be pretty to bring some kind of up along the top edge here why not right it's the taller one and we can kind of sand it off the the edge if we want to and this is where you guys can really have a lot of fun um and coordinate your pieces, right, with whatever napkin you decide to use on your door. So see, we can kind of go up the side. Let's do a couple more of these yellow flowers. Let's see, what do I have left here? Here's some right here. So if you just signed on, oops, I don't need that part, I want this part. If you just signed on, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing, uh, I'm creating the, comp, the um, this was like a bonus uh, craft kit that we're selling along with the uh, Crafter Noon workshop where we did the door, the beautiful spring door. And I also just want to let y'all know that this will not be our last uh, Crafter Noon workshop. Tracy and I are going to continue to collaborate with Print, print Cut Craft um, because we're going to do a summer door, a fall door, a Christmas door. We're going to do some seasonal doors. Um, I just love the project so much, and I just thought the door was so unique. Okay, so if I wanted this to look like it's kind of going up, I'm actually going to cut this, these two flowers apart. So I'm kind of building... I'm kind of just building my own little, I don't know, my own little viney, flowery thing going up. Okay, so you can cut the pieces. You can kind of cut the pieces. You can do them however you want, add however many you want. And like I said, it's a great way to cover up a little spot. Like if you don't like how a certain area looks, really super simple right little butterfly little bumblebee <laughs> something like that okay so i'm going to be using mod podge matte here i'm excited for the seasonal doors too carrie it's going to be so cute um i didn't see these in your store will you be adding these again these kits are actually sold through print cut craft they are the ones that manufacture and actually cut the wood items and so we have a link for you, Kathy, where you can go and sign up for the free workshops to get the replays of everything. And, um, and there, that's where you'll be able to, to order the additional kits if you choose to. The door kit, for anybody that wants the door kit. And the door kit comes with, obviously, the door and then also the little spring attachment. And the links for the workshops for these are completely free. 
Okay, that's so cute. So I'm doing the little bird house, standing bird houses and birds that are gonna be displayed kind of on each side of my, of my door. Okay, here we go. We're gonna dip into this. This again is just matte Mod Podge, the yellow label, matte Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna go ahead, just kind of put my Mod Podge on here. Make sure, whoops, I'm picking up napkin bits. It's okay if you go outside the edge. Most of the time I'll do kind of a quick coat over the whole thing when I'm done. And then I'm just gonna layer on my pieces. Okay, so just a little simple tap and then don't, I know you're gonna be tempted to smooth it, but don't. I want you to take like a chip brush like this, okay, natural bristle brush, and we're gonna pounce. We're gonna pounce, pounce, pounce up and down because we wanna work this napkin down into all those nooks and crannies. Don't worry about anything over the edge, we'll sand that off. But look how pretty this looks because look, the crackle comes through. You see the crackle coming through? Isn't that gorgeous? I think it's so, so pretty. So let me go ahead and let's work on this one right here, okay? All right, oops. So let's decide kind of where this one's gonna go. Oops, I didn't get quite enough right here. And I'm just going to work my way up, creating my own little kind of viney, little flower vine. Kind of overlap a little bit. I want it to look like it's all part of one. This one kind of over a little bit. There we go. Okay. If it overlaps a little bit, we need to make sure there's some Mod Podge underneath there. And now we're going to come back and we're going to pounce. That is so cute. I like the flowers going up the side of the house. That's super cute. Really press those down in. Sometimes what I'll do too, y'all, is I'll take a plastic sheet, okay? I'll take a plastic sheet and I'll lay it over my napkin art um, and I'll take that fatty part of my finger and just really kind of rub this in again because I want that napkin down in all those little nooks and crannies. We're going to do a top coat over it, which is important. We need to seal this napkin art. It's just a little thin piece of tissue, so we need to seal it. And then also, when we add that top coat of Mod Podge, it makes the napkin even more transparent. And I love that because that means your crackle is going to show through even more. Okay? Yeah, it's so pretty. Love it. Okay. I'm just going to peel this off really carefully. Love, love, love. Okay, now we're going to dry it because it's important. We don't want to sand the edges um, without making sure that the napkin's dry. And then we'll do the top coat to seal everything. Okay? <laughs> I'm so glad y'all are watching today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll all take time to follow my page so that you don't miss any other um, things that I'm doing here and offering. Okay, I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper. You could use a, a foam sander or sanding file, anything like that. And I'm just going to sand off any of the napkin that kind of came over the edge. 
That one was easy. This one's got a little bit more. I guess if you wanted to, you could wrap it around to the side. Cute. Oh, I've got a little bit in this little bird hole here. Look at that. A little bit right there. Look how pretty that is. I'm so glad that I did that. I think that looks really great. So next part of our process here is just to just a quick thin coat of the Mod Podge. Okay. And again, this is to seal it, to protect it. Okay. And I usually just do the whole, the whole project. That way you don't see any kind of like stops and starts. And it won't take hardly any time at all to dry. So cute. Cute, cute, cute. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so let's just kind of look. Actually, before we do that, let's let's I'm gonna move these a little bit. Let's go back to their rooftops. Okay, so I made the rooftops these this pretty, it's called Secret Garden, but then I also did some uh, antiquing on top of it. But I just want to show you that I think a little distress would be fun on these. So I'm going to take my, this, my little piece of sandpaper here and I'm going to just kind of sand down through it. And do you see how, what that does? I, it just kind of scratches up the surface. It kind of brightens things back up, but you still have your two tones of color because we put the, um, the crackle medium on there as well. So this is kind of a grittier piece of sandpaper, but look how cool that looks. So you can still see the antiquing wax. You can still see obviously the green paint, but it just kind of gives it a little bit more, again, kind of a distressed, shabby finish. I think it's really pretty. You can see the difference here, right? Big difference. But now we kind of have variations of greens that we can see. We've got the raw edge of the wood that we can see. And we still have our antiquing in there as well. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Let's see if we can see it up close. <laughs> can you see all the colors in it? Kind of that dark, that darker brown antiquing, the paint, and now we kind of scratch through it. It's just really pretty and shabby. I like it. All right, let's try to clean up my mat here. There's going to be a lot of dust. Okay, so we've got that ready. We've got this ready. All right, all of this is ready. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my glue gun and get this hot. Um, I, you have a couple different options when you glue your pieces together, okay? So one could be using like a really good, scat, uh, scot I like to use scotch tacky glue. It's a really good white glue. It works for wood, works for all kinds of pieces. Um, but sometimes your hot glue is good for certain things as well, okay? So I'm going to turn on my hot glue gun. Sometimes I'll use both, okay? And that means that I might do a couple dots of this, but I might do a dot of hot glue too because the hot glue will hold it in place while the other glue is setting up. Same thing with like E6000, right? If you ever need to uh, attach something that's metal or that's heavier, you can use your E6000, but a couple dots of hot glue will, are the short-term fixative, right? The, th the thing that holds it short-term, keeps it from floating around while the other glue sets up, okay? You couldn't resist, Janet. You ordered the kit. I'm so glad that you did, y'all. It's so cute. Okay. It's so cute. You're going to love it. Look, I put the little bee, little bee down there. <laughs> so I think these little birdhouses are going to look really cute um, on each side. 
Okay, so those are still drying just a little bit, but these are ready to go. So let's put these together. Now you should have a, you're gonna have a large, a medium, and a small. So there's the two mediums, there's the large, and here's the large. So we've got a large, and then we've got a medium, and we've got another medium, and we've got a small, and we've got a small. This is gonna be the stand that holds the bird houses. So for these, I'm just gonna use a little bit of my um, scotch glue. So I can just put a little bit kind of here and here, maybe a line here and here. And then if I'm concerned, I can put a little drop, a couple drops of hot glue. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that these are lined up, right? because we don't want to have any problems getting our birdhouse in there. So we're going to make sure those are lined up really well. You can look at it from the bottom too. Whoops, I just moved it. The same thing here. So large, then medium, then small. Now these could have been sanded too, just so you know. So like if you did decide you wanted to see a little bit of that um, natural wood, let me just do a little bit. I don't think it'll move. You see, I should, probably should have done that first. I'll do it on my other one. So you can sand along the edges just so you see that. I do think that's really nice. Let's see, I think it's holding it together enough. So don't do as I do on this one, sand them first. I'll do it right on the other one. <laughs> Let me make sure nothing moved. This one moved just a little bit. All right, so let's put that one there. So this one, let's sand these first. I like seeing that little edge. It just gives you a little, it's almost like a highlight. If you guys have to sign off, I realize we've gone over an hour now. It's fine. This replay will be here. And if you register for the Crafternoon Workshop, you'll get a link to this re replay once we've got it downloaded. Okie dokie. Let's do this one. Are you guys glad it's Friday? Everybody happy it's Friday? <laughs> I'm happy it's Friday. All right, and just make sure, you wanna make sure it's all nice and lined up so we don't have any problems getting our houses in here. And this is nice and dry. So now, you've got a couple different choices here, right? You can glue this on the top. I like it on the top. I think the top, it just because you get more of a, oh, I don't know, if you get more of a, um, dimension with that. So I'm going to use my glue, right? And you want to make sure it's along the inner edges, but it's okay again to put maybe a little dot of hot glue just because that way it can hold it. And I'm kind of holding my finger at the top so I can tell um, where that top edge is. Oops. Perfect. Look how cute. Now we have something else to add to this one. This one's going to get these two smaller little perchy things here. Actually, do I want it to be bigger? Let me think about this. I might double mine. 
might double mine and make it bigger. Hmm. The other one's going to have two. I think I'm going to. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm going to put these two on top of each other. You can you could have two if you want, but I'm going to put mine on top of each other to kind of make this little perch. Now, do you see that white? That's just the glue. That glue is going to dry clear. Okay, that glue is going to dry clear. And then let's do this one. It'd be fun if you wanted to add even a little bit of moss or something coming out of the, the little bird hole, the bird holes. <laughs> Is that what you call it? <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Okay, so same thing on this one. I'm going to kind of fill the point up there. Make sure my point's kind of in the middle. Oh my goodness, these are so cute. And then these bigger ones, I'm going to put one right there. And I'm going to put one right there. So cute. Okay. We're almost there, y'all. Okay, so now we've got our little our little holders. I'm going to let this one sit for just a minute. So I don't want anything to fall, but this is going to slide. There it goes. I should have thought about that when I put the napkin art on. It does slide down in there a little ways. Okay, but I still think it's okay. Right, got some chippy, dusty stuff. <laughs> but do you see now they're going to stand on their own, right? They're going to stand. It'll be so cute. So, so cute. Okay, I'm going to lay this one back down though because I don't want the glue to be moving. And then same on this one. It's just going to slide down. I'm not even putting any glue or anything in there because I'm thinking when I get ready to store these, it'll be so great to just slide that back out. I can just slide that part back out. It'll be so great for storage. Don't you think? Isn't that cute? Look how cute it's going to be. And again, I didn't want everything to be too matchy matchy. So I went more complimentary. Right, so now I've got this little house, but see how the napkin kind of pulls all the colors together. And then if I put a little bit of moss on this one, if you want to put a few little dimensional flowers on your birdhouses also, you could. So it's just going to look like it's going to be a really cute little vignette, uh, a little cute spring vignette. It's going to be so cute. So I still have birds. I forgot. I forgot about the birds. <laughs> <laughs> I think the birds, I'm going to keep them yellow. That's what the bird on my house is. So I think I'm going to keep the birds yellow. And as I said, if you're going to, wherever you're going to stand these, probably a good idea to go ahead and paint the back. I just didn't do that during our, our little class today. So these are the stands for the birds, right? Remember we did these. So basically we're just going to paint the birds and these birds are going to get uh, glued. They don't actually go inside. They're just going to get glued. This is going to get glued right to the back. Okay. So you'll have these little birds. If you don't want little birds on the spindles like this, you could, okay, you could just add them on the house. You could make them look like they're perched on the house. They could even be perched up here, right, on the roof. Um, they could be perched down here. Um, they can be wherever you want them to be. But in your kit, you will also get these so that if you want them to be standing, they can be standing wherever you want. Okay? So you're going to have this in the kit. 
sorry, I didn't paint those birds. And then the other thing that you're going to have in this kit is a little sign. Um, it looks like this. So this little sign comes with vinyl. And the vinyl actually says, welcome to our nest. Welcome to our nest. And you won't be able to read it, but it's, a, it's, it's already cut for you in white vinyl. So let's do this just real quick. And then um, you guys can, can go about your day and do whatever else you want to do. I think you kind of understand the birds, right? I'm just going to paint the birds. I might distress them. I don't think I'm going to crackle them. Or you can napkinize your birds. Actually, it'd be cute to maybe paint the bird and napkinize the wing or vice versa, mm -hmm. right? Or vice versa would be really cute. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on my sign. Have you done vinyl before? Has anybody done vinyl before? And then this is going to, this actually is going to have a little bit of jute here so that you can tie knots, you know, actually make your little sign and it can hang off of one of your birdhouses. That'd be cute. Yeah, I think it's super cute. I'm going to go ahead and dry this real fast. Oh, my hands are a mess. <laughs> yes, this is all part, part of a kit that you can purchase if you sign up for the free workshop. Um, and it'll have links to the spring door workshop and the little attachment that goes on the spring door. And then um, Tracy with Print Cut, Cut Craft did her little birdhouses. You'll have her workshop for that. And then you'll have my workshop for the birdhouses. We just, it's just a fun collaboration for us to both show um, different ways that you could do things. Yeah, really fun. They're the ones, Print Cut Craft are the ones that actually do the manufacturing of the wood. And I love their wood cutouts. Their wood cutouts are fabulous. So I'm going to take my sandpaper here because I don't want this sign looking all new. I want it to look kind of, I want it to look more rustic. So I put my faux stain on there with the liquid wax. And now I'm just kind of sanding over it. Just want it to look a little distressed. Okay, I want it to look a little shabby, a little shabby, a little distressed, <laughs> like it's been out in the weather. Okay, let me put this back up. We're going to work on our vinyl. So if you haven't done vinyl before, um, I am looking for my little tool. Um, Tracy, it does a lot of, she actually teaches like cricket classes and all kinds of things, but I, um, she has a little tool she uses, but this is what I use. I just use a little pin, a straight head pin like this. We're going to have to do just a little bit of what we call weeding. Okay. A little bit of weeding. So we're actually going to use the words, the letters, so we're going to kind of pick up, let me see if I, I'm going to bring my camera down here a little bit. I can see a little better. So I'm picking up the corner. Don't worry about that right now. I'm picking up the corner with the, the pin. And I just want you to carefully, very carefully, we're going to kind of take this off. We're going to be really um, gentle with it because we want those words. Okay. So now we have the words, right? But do you see how there's going to, and I'm sorry, white on white is really hard to see, but there is a little tiny piece inside the E that needs to be removed. There's a little tiny piece in the L that needs to be removed. And again, you're just going to pick these out. I usually just pick them out with a pin. Did I get that one? Can't tell. White on white, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, yeah, I did get it. There it is. There's going to be a little, the little, I call them innards. 
So we're going to pick out the little innards. There's the inner of the O. Oops. I don't want to take up the whole thing. I just want that little, little piece. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think my inner of my E already came out. Sometimes they'll come out when you take them off. Here's another little piece that needs to come out. So you really should be seeing the whole word. If you see any little innards, use your little pen and take them out. This process is called weeding. You're weeding. <laughs> okay, you're weeding. So when you get your kit, don't think that this is just, you know, I don't want you to overlook this part. It may look kind of funny to you. Because, it's all, again, it's all white. So I've done my weeding. Maybe kind of hard to tell, but let's see if we can see it better over here. You can see it a little bit better over here. All those little innards are out. Okay? Okay, so this piece is what we call transfer tape. This piece right here, this is called transfer tape. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this transfer tape off, and the very first thing I'm going to do, especially when it's brand new like this, is I'm going to I put it on my T-shirt. <laughs> just put it on your T-shirt. I don't like it when they're too sticky, so I usually just put them on my T-shirt a little bit, and then, all right, then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it down on top of the words. Okay, on top of the words, and I have my little tool. What did I do? Here it is. So I will use like, and I, this one is well used, right? Because I use like my Sonic gift cards that are empty or old expired hotel keys, things like that. And I'll use them for different techniques. Well, obviously you can see this one's been used for paint and all kinds of things. But this is the tool <laughs> that I use to as my squeegee. Right, so I'm just going to kind of squeegee down over this. I just want to make sure it grabs really good, really well. Okay, and now I'm going to take off the back of the vinyl. So just follow these steps and then just kind of watch as you take it off. We want to make sure no pieces stick to the, um, uh, the base, this piece that I'm peeling off. So I think I'm okay. It's going to look backwards. Okay, it's going to look backwards because we're about to flip it over and put it on the sign. All right, you ready for the sign? Okay, I think the sign is just so cute. I'll put, put this on top of there so you can see it a little better. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to decide kind of where I want it on the sign. I can see one little piece that I missed. There's a little tiny piece in this O. It may not be worth the trouble. It's so tiny. I'm just not going to worry about it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to lay this down. Welcome to our nest where I want it to be. And then I like to use the fatty part of my thumb first to just kind of go over it. You can also go back over it with your little card, your little squeegee tool. And go different directions. We want to make sure that it gets down really well. I usually come back and just kind of go over it. And now we're going to remove this part. But if it doesn't, if it tries to lift, you know what? I probably should have dusted this off a little bit. Let's go this direction. Here's my little pin. So if anything tries to lift, just use, you can kind of use your little pin to put it back down. Mine is lifting a little bit because I don't think I dusted off my piece after I sanded it. So I'm going to be really patient as I take this off. All right, I'm just kind of go, use my finger kind of as I go. You guys make sure and sand off, I mean, uh, wipe off any dust that's on your little sign if you decide to use the vinyl. It's going fine. I just have to kind of press it a little bit as I go. All right, we're on the 
almost done. Yay! Okay, got it all off. Now, because I did not dust it off, right, because I didn't really dust it off well, uh, I'm going to just, for insurance here, I'm probably going to put a coat of Mod Podge on top of this because I don't want my vinyl lifting, okay? And I'm actually going to just do this with my finger. So if you ever have trouble, if you're ever worried about it lifting, this is a nice little tip for you. And y'all should not have this problem if you dust your piece back off. I did not. Okay. But that way you can see what to do if you need it. And then, of course, this is going to dry nice and clear. It'll be so cute. So you can use this as a sign on your birdhouse if you want to. It'll be adorable. So all I have left to do really is just paint my birds or napkinize my birds. <laughs> Yeah, I, a lot of times, Sherry, I like to use the negative because I like to paint. I use the negative of the, of the vinyl and paint like a stencil because then I can choose the color I want the words to be. But white looks fine on this. White actually stands out really nicely on this. Really, really cute. So if you wanted this, do you see, like if you wanted to have a little sign, you know, hanging somewhere, it could be at the top. It could be hanging kind of off of one of the one of these little guys. It could even be down here. You can decide wherever you want it to be. I just think it's really, really cute. So I wanted to be sure you knew kind of the vinyl process. Um, Tracy at, at Print Cut Craft, she may do her vinyl process just a little bit differently, um, but both, both ways work, <laughs> right? Both ways work. So this could even be cute up here. I just think it's just as cute as it can be. You can just put them wherever wherever you want, right? You, it, that's the cool thing about kits like this is you can play with them and do whatever you want. Now, the transfer tape, um, it actually will stay. Um, you can reuse it over and over again. So if you keep your, your little backing here, you can put your backing on it and you can keep it um, until it's just and not, you know, once it doesn't stick anymore, then you can throw it away. Okay. It's a good way to spend your lunch hour. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, so really, um, I just need to paint my little birds. So that is it. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go big for just a second here. Okay, I'm gonna go big for just a second here because I want you to see what we've done we did our pretty little birdhouse so let's look really close at the crackle see the crackle oh and it's coming through our napkin we made our little viney uh little flower vine going up the side of the birdhouse so so cute i think these birdhouses need some moss i would probably put a little bit of green moss in them aren't they cute i love how we kind of shabbied up the rooftops I think the rooftops look great. Very, very cute. And I think they're going to look really cute with my door. Let me see how I can do this. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I can't hold them both up at the same time, but you can kind of see. So this napkin that I used on the birdhouse, I'm just going to have to hold, I'm going to have to hold up one and then I'll take pictures with them all together is the same napkin that's on my door. Isn't that cool? So see, they coordinate. They coordinate really cute, really well. You can use some of your, uh, just pull colors from your napkin um, that can be colors from this. This Home Sweet Home is also vinyl, all right? And Tracy shows you how to do that um, on her work, her part of the workshop. But I just think they're going to look so cute all to together. I just think it's going to look so cute. Isn't that going to be darling? And then we still have the little birds. And I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of think I might put the birds on my houses. I'm not sure that I'm going to do this part, right? I'm kind of leaning towards putting them on my houses and just having kind of the set of three. But they are very cute. If you want them to stand on their own, you'll just paint these out or napkinize them or crackle them. You know all the techniques now, right? They're, maybe you paint the bird and you napkinize the wing. You're just going to glue them on the back, 
right? And then they'll just stand up and you can have their wing go any which way, however you want, or you can bypass this if you want to just put these onto the house, okay? Onto the bird houses, okay? <laughs> okay, I hope that I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I'm sure you mentioned, but where do we purchase these kits? Okay, this is a collaboration from the Crafter Noon Workshop. So you purchase your kits through Print Cut Craft, and the um, uh, the link for that is right up at the top. It'll say printcutcraft.net forward slash Crafter Noon. Okay, um, Cheryl had actually just posted it in the comments there to make it a little easier for you to find. The workshop part of both, all of this is completely free. The supply list is free. Everything is free except for just purchasing the kits. Um, so the door kit, which is right here. Switch hands here. <laughs> the door kit, which also comes with the little attachment. Isn't it just so cute? And of course, I had to crackle. I actually crackled blue and green underneath my door. And then this is an add-on if you decide you want the little birdhouses that can go with it, okay? So that's, can, there's basically two kits that you have the option of getting. Right, and so Tracy Gibson at Print Cut Craft, she's in my business group. We both have the same um, business coach um, and we just, we just feel like our, we just, kind of meshed and I love her surfaces. I love her surfaces so much. So that's why we wanted to collaborate for the Crafternoon project. And uh, and I promised everybody in the Crafternoon workshop that today during Craft and Chat, I would work on the houses, the little bird houses. And I think that they are absolutely precious. They're so cute. I can't wait to get it all on display. I'm gonna add a little moss. I'm going to add the birds. I'm going to add the little sign. I think it's going to be really cute. 